What is good? We're back. My day. <laughs> well, you gotta throw it in every once. <laughs> All right. <laughs> don't don't scoff. <laughs> All right. What are we doing? I caught a little. Jay Wayne didn't have a shirt on when I was coming. I <laughs> ca- caught a little. When you were coming. Half naked Jay Wayne and the. the, the Had to get the <laughs> tea. Represent. <laughs> We're back. We're ready to roll. Buy lows. Must buy now before it's too late. No big codes. Move to make. Buy nows. Buy lows. Whatever you need. Whatever you got. You know, we would much rather be here doing a week two review, but we got to do these shows for your pleasure or the algorithm. So mm-hmm. here we are. Mm-hmm. And we better get to it or they're tuned out already. Yeah. Well, Who's we first? got a, we got a good one for you. We're going by lows. They already left. Yeah. Um, we're going to go. Take your shirt off. In. <laughs> In no particular order. I guess we go in order. Oh, we're going in order. Tank, Tank Dell, Olave, uh, Brandon Ayuk, Garrett Wilson. We've got a couple other ones at the end we could throw in there to, to go ahead and snoop around on. You just gave them the whole list. Now they really can tune out. Well, whatever. I mean, sure. That's fine. See the timestamps. Hit me in the you. comment section below. Make I sure you hit like, subscribe, you know. Yeah. Be sure to check us out on the Patreon side of things. You can uh, catch an extra episode every week. We're reviewing the week. The week. Every, every week, Sunday, every extra Sunday. show. Catch you at 9 p.m. You can hop on there. It's live. You can ask some questions. We're, we're kind of just recapping what happened on the day's action, talking a little fantasy, talking a little real football. Recapping what happened. Capping. All right. No cap. No cap, kids. Tank, Tank Dell. Dell. Got to be on the buy low list. Duh, right he should have had an amazing week. I mean, he just blew it. Yeah. He just, he just short-arming it. He's doing what, what people want Quentin Johnston to be doing, mm. which is just not, you know, he could have easily had a touchdown. That was a beautiful throw. No one in front of him on the run. He just, bleh. yeah. And then there's another one on, along the sideline. A couple of plays, and he has a huge day. I can't remember exactly what happened week one, but there, there's two down weeks for you. Mm-hmm. And, the, I mean. And Nico's being a beast oh, right now. I mean, yeah. Nico's slaying it. Diggs had a good week one. This was bound to happen with the rotation of the Texans, and it's not to say in the next two weeks Tank Dell isn't the Nico Collins of this offense scoring all the points, and then it goes to di- you know right. goes kind of all around. Uh, but Diggs isn't going to be there forever, and and Tank Dell's a guy who averaged like 18 points per game last year uh, with Nico Collins on the field. He's Stroud's homie, which you know isn't necessarily a reason to draft somebody, but it's it's not the worst. Kelsey and and Patrick Mahomes has made a living off of that. But Tank Dell, very good player. It's just not happening for him right now. Uh, obviously, you know, not commanding the, the super high target share, but not terribly behind Diggs uh, right now. You got Nico commanding 25% of the target share, Stefan Diggs 17%, and then uh, Tank Dell right underneath there with 16%. So it's kind of all going to those guys. Uh, a little bit to mix in. He's not on there. Uh, that's fine. And then, you know, Schultz mixes in. But this this those that target share percentage could be shifting around all season long tank dell could easily get going in games uh this is this is an easy easy buy low for me uh this is dynasty Mm -hmm. we're not playing half a season we're not reacting after four games and thinking the sky has fallen tank dell's a good player i've already seen it i've already seen him put up off numbers in this offense and we're we're evolving and going Further and further, Slowick's in his second season and now calling plays. Things are getting even sexier over there. Now, hopefully he stays around because people love grabbing that that Shanahan tree to make him their next head coach. Already had some interviews after his first season, so that would be a bit of a bummer. But tied to a a, uh, a good quarterback who probably has put at least to bed some doubts of whether or not that was a, a fluke or not coming in and having some some good solid weeks here and looking looking really really strong. I mean, who had doubts? I mean, I mean, there was plenty of people who were like, "I like it, but I need to just I need to see it again." And maybe we need to see more for those people. But nah, um, man, when he throws the ball and the ball yeah. leaves his hands, you feel like it's well, about that, to be completed. Everything's good. Everything's right. Every every everything's really going well uh, over there for for the Texans and CJ Stroud. So. And that defense is humming too. First by low, I would I'd easily give you a first for him uh, sure. for, for Tank Dell. T Higgins or Tank Dell? Mm. You know I love the Tigers. I know. I'll take T Higgins. Yeah, 
Uh, Big Co's here being like, ah, I got to take Tank Dell. Oh, for sure. If he was here, he would be taking Tank Dell. But he's not, is he? He's not here. I'm over here having to produce and lug the reps. I, I you know, that that's a really close one. You And I think you can go either way. I'll, I'll cop out on that a little bit. I'll buy T. Higgins um, right now. It's a great buy. <laughs> oh, for sure. I almost put him on this list. Yeah. As soon as he misses a game, they're just, everybody's back out. Yeah. Remember that? I, I, I'm going to go Tank Dell just for the sake of five. T. Higgins isn't out there right That's now. That's not low buying. No. That's not terribly low buying. No, that, that was kind That's of average price. Medium pace, um, from, in and out. From, but it, there's a third on here. That's not realistic. Tank Dell for Ramondre Stevenson. You could cash in on Ramondre's good season Tank right now. Tank Dell, baby. Um, DJ Moore, Tank Dell on a third. That's not really buying low either. Mm -hmm. Where you were buying DJ Moore now. Maybe you're worried about the direction of the Bears, so you're, you're interested in that sell. I think the Bears got better week two, even though they lost. I like this deal. DeAndre Swift Waddle for... Dell and Odunze. I'll take oh, the Dell and Odunze side. Really? Yeah. Rome and Waddle were similar value. In, Waddle should be on the buy low list too. In the in the off season and then Dell over Swift all day. Yeah, I'll take the I'll take it's, that. I feel like Waddle's the best player in that deal, so it's always tough for me to give up. He's the best, the best player. player in the deal right this second, but Dell's not far behind him at all. And Rome Odunze could easily end up being the best player. You know player how much think Dell weighs? I don't care. <laughs> Uh, Alvin Kamara, you capitalizing off of Alvin Kamara? Uh, you know, good, good. Yeah, uh, two and tank. You know, it's a not two the worst. Four and tank. You know, and if, a two if, QB. If you're, you know, if you don't need the production from Alvin Kamara and you're going the opposite direction, get those points out of your lineup. Get the points out of your lineup, and you get Tank Dell moving forward. Like I said, Tank Dell on a three. That's not real. Tank Dell on a one for Laporta and a three. I'll take. I'll take the Tank Dell on the one. Is that pure premium? Nope. What filter you got on there? I ain't got all these. You got more than five. I got I got more than five, but that was a four person trade. Son of a bitch. Aaron Jones for Tank Dell. Uh, sure, that's you know. Ramondre. I, no, no brainer. Ramondre. For, uh, I'll take Tank Dell. Yeah. Go out there, buy yourself some Tank Dell. Buy some Jalen Waddle too. Yeah, I mean I'm all, he, always down to buy some Jalen Waddle. He's two be, two weeks. He hasn't it, done. I guess he did have a touchdown week one. It's an interesting one here. Love and Flowers or Tank Dell and Stroud. One QB though. Hmm. Mm. I'm not really messing was, with trading quarterbacks with one that QB. Was two QB. Yeah, that would be interesting. Flowers or Tank Dell? People love that stack on oh, Flowers. Oh, flowers? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Bird in the hand, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Number one guy on that team. Uh, this is a bad trade. Jordan Mason, Jameson Williams, Tank Dell, Lad McConkey. Jordan Mason and Jameson Williams for? Tank Dell and Lad McConkey. And you're taking the? Dell and McConkey side. <laughs> What if you got CMC? Uh, I mean, that makes it a little better, but... J-Mo's on the way up. J-Mo's certainly on the way up, but Dell's... Can't all, buy him right now. Dell's already up, and I'm not worried about Lad McConkey. Dell's down right now. He's, he's not I know, performed. but I, for, to me, he's already up. Recency by... Dude, two weeks into the season, everything is solidified. Everything it has is changed. Is. Yeah, I'm, I don't operate that You're way. You're as good as your last game, Casey. Right. I don't operate that way. I operate from... We need some time. Uh, but we're here for your pleasure. So how much time you got, buddy? Bam, back to back episodes. I'm back on the soundboard. Got it. Tank, Suck tank it. Dell for a first and a third. Let me keep the third. I'll give you the first. <laughs> tank Dell, Michael Pittman. All right. Did we bring that up on the last yeah. show? Oh, it feels like Pittman. It felt like Pittman, but it feels like Dell. Yeah. <laughs> it still feels like Pittman to me. Um, Ayuk in a third or Dell on a second and Colby Parkinson. Ayuk. You're the best player in the deal. For the Ayuk. most part, you probably ask me a question, Ayuk. I'm probably taking the best player in the deal. Probably. Because I don't want to make a trade where I'm giving away the best player in the yeah, deal. Yeah, but here's the... I, I agree for the most part, but in like the one that you said I'm taking the best player in the deal... That, you didn't that, agree with the best player? I, not that I agree with the best player right this second. <laughs> But we're talking about we're playing fucking Dynasty. I and one of those well, players was Roma Dunze. The other one's Tank Dell. Those guys could be fucking RB1s or wide receiver ones all day long. You know? Rome, tank. Rome not so far. Whatever. It's the second game with a rookie quarterback. He's got an MCL spray. Yeah, I'm have been good. Playing, probably. I'm good. I'm fine. Like I His hand have, placement isn't where it needs to be on I'm the I'm still so catch. fine with Roma Dunze. I'll buy all the Roma Dunze I could buy. I've never been more sure of a prospect working out than Roma Dunze. Never. Whether, that's what. I, well, that that I'm not saying he's going to be great, but I'm not. He's not going to be a bust. Is what you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying he's going to be as good as you know Malik Neighbors or 
Marvin Harrison are right this second, but I think he's going to be really, really good. Uh, and and at, at baseline, just not bust. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, let's go Chris Olave. Mm, Obviously on the Saints. This is how this works, kids. You have two bad games to start the year off that don't live up to expectations, and that's a good player, and you know they're good, and they have a good value and good draft. All this, you you, you go buy them. You try right. to, because they're obtainable now. Because if he was doing what he should be doing, he wouldn't be obtainable. He's buddy's wide receiver 45. People are already frustrated. You got to take advantage of the short-term redraft-minded style players a thousand percent and go grab players that have a couple of down weeks throw out throw out an offer you know yeah that's exactly how you need to play this because everyone's Simple. so so reactionary and you know sometimes those reactionary people will be right but I, that's not well, how blind I wanna, dogs find blind squirrels find nuts you a know? thousand percent and it's like it's dynasty and i don't i don't want to get terribly caught up in you know if you're watching the game in its context and you're like oh man it just doesn't look good for chris olave the saints look terrible He's not working out, you know, uh, maybe I maybe I do want to try to sell Olave for something really good that I could that I could get from him. Uh, but I, you know, I, I just I'm OK with it. Obviously, Rahid Shahid is out there just crushing it uh, for them. And but two big, deep shots. But that could easily be Chris Olave at any point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, and neither one of those guys have really had to play into the second half at this point either. Uh, so Chris Olave had a good game this past game, but they've been shellacking both teams that they've played. So neither one of them have, have had to play aggressively into the fourth quarter or really even into the third quarter um, and really be heavily targeted and leaned on. Uh, but we do like this new look that you're seeing from Derek Carr and Kubiak over there. It's just everything looks a whole lot different. They're protecting him. Derek Carr's looking uh, very, very uh, more than capable at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Olave's a, a guy just like Jalen Waddell, who can produce, is a great route runner, is a deep threat. Uh, like I said, it's, they've just been hitting the home runs of Shahid, and, and no, no shade on Shahid at all. Uh, I, I think great for Shahid, great for my best balls with Shahid, great for any league I have Shahid in. But Chris Olave right now is is the buy in this offense, and and it was the buy all off season for us. We talked about him multiple times. Chris Olave, uh, you know, only catching. 20% of the target share with Shahid catching 22.5%, Alvin Kamara catching 20%. Uh, so it's basically kind of going around to all three of those guys at the moment uh, for the Saints. You got some Dynasty Daddies pulled up for me? Mm hmm. The Daddy. Jaden Reed or Chris Olave? That's super easy. Give me Olave. Some people don't think it's so easy, Jason. It's super easy. It's like one of the easiest uh, smash, except that first and a second for Olave. A first and a second for given Olave. his startup ADP, that's in, that's probably it's right in right on time. Might not be buying low, no. but still, I guess kind of is. You know, he could easily probably have gotten two first for him before the season starts. Now he's only sixteen fancy points in after two weeks, and you know, you probably could get him for less than that. Right, Jamar Chase and Drake May or Chris Olave and Caleb Williams. Uh, I probably got to. Oh, that's a good one, huh? I want to say Chase. Chase is a buy low right now. For sure. You got to go try and throw two firsts out for Chase, see if you can get him. <sighs> that's a toughie. That's not buying low. No, definitely not buying low. Saquon. Yeah, I don't. Or Chris Olave in a two. Not a huge amount of buy lows here. And these are, this is Dynasty Daddy, right? Uh, big trade database. So I'm just looking at trades that were made today uh, with. Two QBs and only five players involved at max, so we don't have to sort out a bunch of... But the, for me, this guy's on the list here because everything Jason said to lead this off of. And then, you know, there's a lot of people who were already kind of on the fence with Chris Olave, and now it's two bad games, and Shahid's doing well, so there's no way Chris Olave is going to have a role in this offense and could be good. And that's where we want to pounce. You know, every right. owner isn't going to give you a buy low. When we say buy low on these guys, every person isn't going to... You, my league would never do that. Like, all right, I got it. But like... Yeah. You know, 11, are you sure the 11 guys in every league who are Chris Olave, you know, one of those guys doesn't have a different opinion on Chris Olave. Like everybody's values are a little different. Um, we can be talking about the median value on uh, 
Chris Olave all we want, but somebody wants to get rid of Chris Olave right now, and that's what we're talking about. Right. That's what we're talking about, the buy lows. So sometimes you go on the Dynasty Daddy, and it, maybe it's not all popping up as trades that are uh, great for your quote-unquote buy low per se, but um, it doesn't mean that there isn't a possibility of being able to grab Chris Olave at a very good value right now, and that's why he makes this list. Uh, and, and, and I just I just see the Saints, you know, they went from a team where the worry about the Saints was that that offense was going to be dog shit and you were worried about Derek Carr. Now, it's week two. I, you know, the Panthers obviously stink. Cowboys came off a big performance uh, and then laid an egg there. Uh, kind of what the Cowboys do from time to time. Love it. I, I don't know if, if the offense that we're seeing from the Saints is going to be the offense we see all year long. If they are, they're going to be a great team because that defense is good. Um, the defense is good, and Kamara is playing out of his fucking mind. He right. looks great, just slithery like like the old Kamara, you know? But the trigger Matt Forte having his best season at age 28. The roles in this offense that are that are available, I think, are, are very, very strong. And I, I just I like where... The scheme of this offense is heading and we've just like i said we haven't even gotten four quarters of production from those guys because we haven't needed it because they've been getting beat so badly or they've been winning so so heavily so goodly uh, yeah uh, so well you know first down per route run chris olave sixth overall and that's a that's a stat that the uh, analytical community really is hanging their hat on right now yeah so puts the anal in analytics you you gotta really really uh enjoy that that's a good stat right there right now he's not high on the first read percentage stats stats uh shahid is holding that down for them but that could easily change and they could they're, they're not terribly far apart that gap can close and then olave could go up there shahid's probably had the better matchup for Carr, and they've been you know, like i said only you know they haven't had full games of getting the data of who's the first read guy is when you need it when you have to have it in these certain because they haven't had to have it anywhere so um but right now you know the I know the the fantasy points data guys they, they they're liking first read uh, percentage and first read target share and first downs per route run and uh, so Chris Chris Olave there for you sixth overall in first down per route run so gotta like that uh, all right let's keep it moving let's go over to Brandon Ayuk now obviously on the list here because just what we said with all the simple. rest of these guys <laughs> so simple what one any good. Uh, missed a big chunk of the season, got paid to be the man and hasn't been the man to be expected here a little bit. You missed a whole bunch of camp. Uh, but hey, I wouldn't have paid you this much money. But the Niners did. You're here. You're a very good player. You're not great. But guess what? CMC's out. Debo's, Debo's now out. out. You need this is you just got paid this amount of money to step it up right here and Deep, be that guy. Right. Debo Debo being out might might increase the price here on Ayuk. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit, but you know, I, I think uh there's there's probably already some people who were fence riding on Ayuk and if you still have them, you, you might be down on them a little bit. Uh I I just there there's potentially the, the, the Debo news certainly doesn't help the people who are holding Ayuk right now that would be which is just a couple games right I don't really know but you know the Debo thing could certainly affect the Brandon Ayuk price tag but you know you can go out there right now and, and send offers for Ayuk and, and see what you can kind of drum up I, I feel like there's probably some good deals out there I felt like the Dynasty Daddy stuff wasn't was was pretty decent uh for Brandon Ayuk I would certainly trade you a first for Brandon Ayuk easily uh we'll we'll see this uh, kind of play out he, he's he was a very good very productive receiver for the Niners and which is why they they wanted to keep him around and watch why they wanted to pay him uh and and you know kind of here we are uh we got you only got three trades up there we got a, a first and a second for Ayuk I would do that I think um 26 second yeah a first and a third and Chig easily for sure uh a first and a third for Nico uh nope Brandon Ayuk a first and a third for Baker and Nico you you're keeping Nico and Baker. It's two QB. I mean Nico, you want Nico over Ayuk, right? Uh, yeah. And then Baker for a first and a third. Uh, yeah. It's probably a little high on Baker. That's a decent trade. It was five. Yeah. At first I was, uh, you know, Ayuk has at least held serve with where the value is, and I think maybe just just in case people are down low, go 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 send some offers out for Brandon Ayuk. All right, let's keep it moving here. Let's go. Uh, let's go, Garrett Wilson. 
hasn't exploded, but hasn't necessarily crushed you. But I, people are are probably as the price tag goes up on these guys, what you paid for them, the uh, obviously the reactionary of the masses gets higher and higher because they want him to be scoring twenty five points every game right now. You know, we just talked about those the the stats that the the analytical squad is really liking right now. Garrett Wilson ninth in first read target percentage with 35%. He's uh, sixth in overall target share, 28%. You know, it's all there. 45th percent in air yards for the team. Like, it's eventually going to explode. So if anybody is sleeping on what the production of Garrett Wilson is right now and what it could be, I have no problem. You know, that's that's a two-firster all day for me if, if somebody wants to – Go ahead and give and and look. Everybody isn't like we're saying. Everybody isn't going to give you uh, a, a really good deal. Th- these are guys who we know uh, have high end potential and have shown that they can play at a high level. Who just aren't getting the output for one reason uh, or another here, right? Mm-hmm. Wilson and Rogers are figuring it out as we kind of get through the season here. And uh, if there's anybody slipping on what it is for Garrett Wilson right now. I think there's, you know, big, big outputs to be coming uh, down the pike. And, you know, he had Sam Fran week one and they got beat up. And then he got Tennessee week two, which, you know, I think is a good defense. And then you got New England there, which, you know, obviously has been playing pretty well. But schedule, not the toughest, but not the easiest. But I'm not worried about the schedule with Garrett Wilson, really. I think him and Rodgers are going to, you know, continue to form. Uh, a nice bond and a nice relationship. And, and you really, you know, Rodgers hasn't played all that much right. with Garrett Wilson. So, uh, or but, that much recently, missed a whole year, you know. But target share good, air yard stuff's good, first read target stuff, all kind of stuff in the top tens of things. So, all that should be a culmination of that uh, you we could see some big explosion uh, here really, really soon. So, Garrett Wilson for Saquon Barkley on Dynasty Daddy for sure. Mm-hmm. Xavier Worthy, a first and a third for Garrett Wilson. Let me get that. Sure. A first, a first, a second, and a first. I mean, that's I think that's right on car. There's two firsts for Garrett Wilson. Uh, Garrett Wilson or Jameer Gibbs? Gibbs. I need that running back, that high elite, young-ass, dynamic running back. If Rogers Good was, offensive line. If Rodgers was 36, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say give me that. Uh, but that's a terrible trade. Devontae Adams and Stafford for Garrett Wilson and Daniel Jones. That's three firsts in a second for Garrett Wilson. Yeah. That's too much. Yeah. That's not. That's why I said that's probably right on par for what. I mean, no one should be more than three firsts, right? I mean, three firsts is like. Three firsts is kind of your standard starting uh, price for the starting. uh, Every guy. Big big time guys. Yeah. Saquon, Ayuk, and a fourth. Is that what that says? For Wilson and a second. I like that. I'll do that. Take that. You'll take the Wilson side? It's starting 11, which is puts more value on the. More player side, starting eleven. Which side do you want? A lot of guys. I'll, I like the Garrett Wilson side. On okay, that one. there's some opportunity on 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 the daddy over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could talk a little. I think Chase, you mentioned it. Got to. You know, just the same theme here. If, if anybody's de- Chase hasn't come out there and compete, some people are like the Bengals are done. I heard uh, Chris Canty on ESPN Radio this morning, like. Bro, I can't believe y'all motherfuckers have jobs. It's just you just get to say inflammatory shit, whatever you want. Then nobody's gonna give a shit. Six weeks from now, one guy might call and be like, "What were you talking about six weeks ago?" Like, but the the Bengals are done. They just gave. They Aaron, should have won. They should have won, and then now they do play. Man, uh, if Yoshivas would have caught that last ball, which he he, he scored twice, but then he he. Right. Could have come up with one that would have really just iced it. But but if anybody is worried about the elite level of play from Chase, I, I think it'll be fine. I, Burrow yeah. seems fine. And, you know, I, se- go ahead and send some feelers out for that as well. Gotta be. You know, I don't, I don't have any problem for that. And then George Pickens would be the last guy on this list. Two games now where, you know, the first game was okay. Now the second game, he had a, like a 54-yarder called back, which was a nice throw by Fields and a great catch by him. And then a touchdown that was awesome. Where I don't even know what the hell the foul even really was there, I, I, you know, uh, on the touchdown yeah, for the, Pickens. Yeah, it's called illegal motion or something like that. And the guy was just in motion. And after the play, he was all pissed off and kicking himself. But I, I, I saw the play. I didn't. I wasn't listening to it, so I didn't understand what the explanation was because – you're allowed to have someone in motion, but maybe I don't know. Is that Fields' fault? He put him in motion at the wrong time, and nah, I don't you know, know. I'm, probably just a, I didn't quite understand it. But but it, it it's great, right there. He, great play. Should have had the touchdown. Pickens thirty-two point three percent on that first read target percentage. So that's that's like 
top 15 up there with a whole bunch of killers. <laughs> you know, Jameson Williams is up there. <laughs> Quentin Johnston's up there. Uh, so, you know, some people don't like to see that. But a lot of really, really good names up there. You know, you got DK and Garrett Wilson and Rashi Rice and uh, Nico Collins and Chris Godwin and Devontae Adams and Justin Jefferson all up at the top of there. Cooper Cup, obviously, uh, just went down. Target share for Pickens, Pickens is 25.6. So up there with a healthy percentage for him. Uh, and it should stay that way. There's no, it should even go higher. If they could throw the, know, ball, throw a the ball a little bit more. I really like George Pickens. He hasn't exploded yet. And I think, I think it's right there. Uh, last week, I believe he was the highest in fantasy points data separation scores. Which well, was, Marvin Harrison was one of the lowest. Uh, yeah, so, well, you know, he stinks then, obviously. But yeah, uh, you know, so there's some elite players who aren't hitting elite thresholds and that's basically the point of this show right go out and send some feelers and see anything less than you know a ton of firsts or really really great players of two firsts for any of those guys you know maybe maybe you don't have to do that for george pickens mm -mm. um but for a lot of those guys that we were just talking about the 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 wilsons uh and the chases you know go go throw those feelers out there you know, you don't have to you don't have to throw two firsts out for Olave and, and Ayuk. Twenty-seven first and Sam Darnold for Pickens. Get rid of this twenty-seven first. Adonai Mitchell for Jordan Pickens. What is going on here? Pickens all day. Charbonnet for Taysom Hill and Jordan Pickens. T George all day. Yeah, there's there's certainly some haters out there with Pickens and probably some opportunity. Uh, Brian Thomas at a two. Pickens at a four. For Pickens and Ford, that's that's, that's tough. I guess I'd still take the Pickens side. But man, Brian Thomas looks like a lot of fun. He certainly is. He pickens a one and a two for Cup and Judy. Oof. That's a terrible trade. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that wraps up that. You know, I did did want to, you know, Quentin Johnston and, and Jamison Williams are in a lot of great analytical thresholds right now. Uh you know, just want to point those guys out, give them a little love. Guys who are perennially uh slept on and hated on. How about your boy Herbert? Uh, I mean, we can throw, throw Justin. We can throw Justin low. Herbert in the buy low right now. You know, not not necessarily performing at at a top level. Yeah. Uh, but what I what I like about that is is where we're going with the Chargers. Right. right. We know that they want to be a run first, run heavy team. We know this is going to be a good defense, but we know really we're seemingly moving it into an era where we thought the chargers should be for the last like five years i think we're actually going to be heading in that direction with the leadership group and the the, the how they're going to build this roster and how they're going to build this team and the the way that the inside that building is going to operate and the confidence that they can instill in this team moving forward and and how they're going to go about their business i think justin herbert is the perfect guy to operate this this whole thing and and you know obviously what i want right now is just herbert to just be healthy yeah make it to get, that buy get through get through the first 6 weeks i think to the buy and then you know see what can happen but if anybody is again you know there's probably plenty of people who don't want to trade herbert and i you know i went on the dynasty daddy and the and the trade value is still pretty high on there so it's still there but there's certainly some people who are probably just out on herbert he's not performing and that's what some people were saying in the hey, they're not going to throw it a lot well they're not going to always be in that position and as they move forward and they get a better group of receivers around them and 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 figure out how they're going to function in this roman offense the efficiency of this offense and the scoring of this offense i think will all go up and up and up and you know 25 23 passes a game will be enough for herbert to be a, a, a very good fantasy asset because those are going to be just you know kind of like what purdy and the niners do a little bit i'm not saying that they they're not running a shanahan system but the efficiency in which yeah that i think that they could move the ball and no slight to quentin or lad but they could use another weapon you know right and they're they're working off the ravens uh by the Ravens cast away running back group, you know, right. from last year. And, right. and they had a chance to go get an elite playmaker and they went to the trenches. Right. Right. You got to start is, there. I love it. So, that you know, they they know they're not there yet and they'll add pieces and he'll get another weapon and that'll only help. And I mean, but shout out to Quentin Johnson. Just murking. Yeah. Shout out to Quentin Johnson. Had, had a great it. had a great game this this past week. Catching two touchdowns. Two great games uh, on the field a lot for them. Leading the team in snaps, targets. Routes run. Yeah, I mean, you know, Lad, Lad was, was a little banged up. Herbert was a little banged up. Uh, Quentin Johnston is, is you know, getting some confidence back. The hand placement. Though. In those hands. Um, and and that's, that's kind of what I expect from this group, this, this 
this head coach and, and, and OC and DC just building guys up instead of tearing them down, mm-hmm. blocking out all the outside noise. And that's kind of why I'm interested in, in buying low on Herbert if, if you can get a little dip there because I like where the Chargers are kind of heading. And that's the kind of stuff that I want to buy into. Right. Agreed. All right. Let's get out of here. Be sure to hit us up on the Patreons. You get an extra episode every week right now in season. We're going 9 o'clock Eastern uh, live. You can get your questions answered. Sunday you can join night, us Sunday baby. night after game recapping. Having a good time. Be sure to write, subscribe, comment below. Be sure to five-star review on anything you're listening to. Until next time, keep it locked and loaded. This is the FFD. We'll we the ya. best music. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>